This is a quick little lecture on delivering successful nutrition services. So really when we think about nutrition services and trying to be successful, we have to go through the process of ADIME. So just as a reminder, nutrition assessment, diagnosis, intervention, and then monitoring and evaluation. And that is a constant cycle, as you can see from the visual there. So while we might just think about a dime for clinical situations, it's just as valuable in the community setting. So with that, I grabbed from the CDC tool that's one of your required readings this week. This is the community change process, and you can see it's very similar to ADIME. Um, so what's valuable in the community setting is to get the commitment of the appropriate stakeholders. So if you think about that in terms of the Pitchfork Pantry, um, and per our recent conversations, the Dean of Students may not be fully committed to the pantry, but we know that the students are committed to it. So trying to get everyone on board is really what is gonna make the program successful. Um, and then you look at assessment. So assessment is looking at the data. So there was research done years ago on the freshmen in the dorms, but really we need to look at food insecurity across all students, including grad students. So once students leave the dorms, um, if they move out after their freshmen, then what happens? Like does food insecurity increase or decrease? Um, so when we do an assessment in this class, obviously you won't be interviewing exact students that are on the ASU campus, but we'll be looking at trends across the United States. Once you have that data, then you can start planning what your next steps will be. So if we think about this in terms of the pantry, once we know that there are food insecure students, then what is the best way to serve them? Um, and maybe the pantry isn't the best way. So if we figure out that there's gonna be a better method, then that could be part of the process as well. After that, then you start to implement the program of what you're trying to do and then you have to evaluate it to make sure that it's actually making a difference. So if we were able to get numbers on like recent food insecurity, then afterwards we would get some post numbers and see what changed through the process, through the implementation of our program. So step one, you have already done. So you just submitted your community and needs assessment. And really the goal of that was just to kind of look at what's going on in the zip code, because that's what census is based on, it's zip code based. So even though it might seem strange that you're looking at this whole big strip of a zip code when the students are just living in a very potentially small piece of that, the census does give us a nice overview of what's going on. So it tells us kind of what's going on in terms of poverty level, in terms of language, in terms of all different factors that you looked at, transportation, jobs, etc. cetera. Um, the needs assessment, when you looked in your textbook and you looked at healthy people and you saw what some of the nutrition concerns could potentially be with the age group that we're looking at, which could be very wide. I mean, students range from all ages now. Most of them are probably, you know, 18 to 35, 40. I mean, the, the range goes all the way up, though. We know that we have students that come back to school for more degrees or their first degree. So all of that is important to consider. The next step of the process is going to be the literature review. So that's also part of kind of the assessment process and just gathering some research about the population. So just within your head, since you're not with your group right now, just consider some of the nutrition concerns that came up during your community and needs assessment. Just kind of think about some of those as we go through this. So step, step two is to analyze some of the subjective and objective data, so otherwise known as qualitative and quantitative. So quality versus quantity, yes? So qualitative is actually being able to like talk to people. So talking to students, asking them, 
how they feel about their food security. Do they have food? Do they have some place to live? Like really kind of digging in there and getting some actual opinions um, on the situation. Whereas quantitative, you're just looking at the numbers. So you already looked at like US Census data. Um, we've looked at some of the CDC information, but as we get into the literature review, you might be pulling information from NHANES about like US type food insecurity numbers, um, the behavioral risk factor survey, and the youth risk behavior survey um, could be potentially useful to you. Um, and then the nationwide food consumption survey is another one as well that could be useful. So these are all the different surveys that are out there, and there are a lot of them. Um, most of them are specific to age groups sometimes. You can see like older Americans, um, maternal and infant health survey. But if you think about the population that we're looking at with the Pitchfork Pantry, we can probably get some data from NHANES. And you've probably seen lots of information on that. There's lots of uh, research papers on that. The Food Security and Nutrition Monitoring Project would be fantastic to look at for our particular needs. Um, let's see what else would be helpful for our purposes. Potentially National Health Interview Survey on Health Promotion and Disease Prevention, because if you are food insecure, you are also getting sick more often. The youth behavior one might give you some information about um, food insecurity. Um, and I think that goes, there's kind of that crossover from high school to college sometimes. So you could grab some from that. Um, and then you can see there's lots of NHANES follow-up surveys that are happening here. Let's go to the next page here. Um, food and nutrient consumption. So that could give us some information about food security. This is based on schools. There's information on WIC, information on knowledge, attitudes, and behavior, which I think is valuable. Because um, our knowledge about food also could affect our ability to cook said food, because if we don't know how to cook, then we're not going to be able to eat potentially. So that all could play into it. So these could be things that you're going to look at as you get into your literature review. Nutrition monitoring activities in states. So then there's some state specific information. So some of these might be helpful. The youth risk behavior and the BRFSS, these both get into like state level data. So that could be helpful as well. So then when we think about ultimately diagnosing, quote unquote, what our problem is, um, some of that could come from your needs assessment when you looked at healthy people to really dig down what ultimately is our concern. Um, but then your literature review is also going to get us to that point. So you're going to look at background information on food insecurity, that's our kind of our big focus in college students and we could expand to the general like adult population as needed. So on the literature review you'll find three articles from the United States that speak to the fact that food insecurity is a problem. You could also speak to financial insecurity, um, any issue that like college students might be dealing with could be part of the background information. And then the second part of your literature review is looking at interventions that have already happened. So there's a lot of research on what other college campuses are doing to combat food insecurity. I think this will be great to look at. So each person in the group is going to find three interventions um, from the past 10 years of primary peer reviewed journal articles. Um, I, for most of that, I would prefer if it was in the US, but other countries might be doing some cool stuff, so it's fine if you look outside of the U.S. for this. But for the background information, that needs to be U.S.-based information because we need to know what our issues are with food insecurity in the United States. In the literature review, then you'll summarize 
each paper kind of paragraph by paragraph. So ultimately each person will have six paragraphs. And by the end of it, you'll kind of come to a cohesive decision on maybe one intervention that you all saw through all of your papers that would really be nice to focus on and really what the biggest, why are college students food insecure? Why does this exist in the first place? Um, and then there's also be an overview video for the literature review assignment. So stay tuned for that. So then you develop a program plan, which ultimately for you guys in this class will be your final intervention project. So you're going to think about ultimately what, if you could like redesign the pantry or redesign an entire system to deal with food insecurity on a college campus, what would that look like to you? Then the last step is monitoring and evaluation. So ultimately, as I said in the beginning, we're trying to lead from a food insecure population to a food secure population. So we could measure that pre and post. We could measure kind of our stakeholder satisfaction with the program pre and post. Just having some deliverables that we're looking at to show that yes, we were indeed successful with this program and that it's making a difference because that's what's going to lead to a program continuing. If we're not making a difference, then we need to figure out what type of program would do that and make modifications. And then like the cycle would continue 